Craig, thanks for joining us. Before we get on to Ferrari's weekend and everything <laughs> went wrong, let's just have a look at what we saw on the car Park Ferme Thursday, Friday mornings. Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> big surprise. We knew Ferrari could have some updates, but we got some very big visual ones on the barge boards and, and on the cooling and the roll hoop. So if we look at the barge board first, tuck down, we know Ferrari haven't really changed this area too much uh, over the season. So this is the existing barge board. This changed for Malaysia. And as you can see, the shape's <laughs> changed uh, with this new extra forward board and then the whole shape of it has been angled backwards. So this has got few effects here. First of all, the barge boards are actually much further forwards now as far as the rules allow them to get. And this is partly the reason you get this slightly hooked shape to them. Uh, and what this barge board is doing is pretty much just setting up the airflow again for the main barge board that which then controls the airflow back through the undercut as we keep talking about getting the airflow back over the diffuser and the gap between the tyre and the diffuser as well, really important. And they've added a whole row of little fins down at the bottom here again. So one of these things as we speak with Willem Toe, it's about spinning these vortices up. Right. The more edges you put in, the more power you can put into the airflow that's coming off of these boards. So it's very influential. And I wouldn't be surprised in future races that we see some changes upstream of this, so maybe the veins under the nose, the front wing, to get this whole set, set up really working so much stronger. Good. Well, okay. barge board developments. Now let's have a look this at is the, the yeah, roll the, the, the really big visual one, uh, which goes on to uh, fair, fair impacts. Ferrari roll hoop, pretty straightforward by F1 standards, just an opening. Um, which feeds down to the engine's airbox, but now we have these um, ears have been added. We can just stop there and have a look. And what these are, these are just like literally just ducts bonded onto the roll hoop structure. So it's not a new roll hoop. Right. The structure underneath is the same. They didn't have to re-crash test or anything like that. So what they've done is added these ducts. And if we now sort of lead on, you can see where these ducts are going and what they're doing. So what happens is each of these ducts feeds back into a common duct here, uh, which you can see each side joins up and then feeds down to uh, a cooler mounted right at the back of the engine. Now, there wasn't a cooler there before. There's an oil tank tucked down around there, but this actual space at the very back of the engine cover was all empty, you know, absolutely ripe for sticking a big radiator <laughs> in there. Now, we've seen pictures... Without any reduction in increase in Exactly. Drive, the yeah. shape mm -hmm. of the, the, the engine cover really hasn't changed uh, enormously. I think it has changed very, very slightly, but only to uh, accommodate these side ducts. And this is, looks like a water radiator. We've seen lots of pictures of the Ferrari on the grid and the Ferrari being stripped down over the weekend. And this is leading forward into the cars, but it does look like water-sized pipes. So this could be two things. It could be the engine, but I kind of doubt that. It's much more likely to be cooling the energy recovery system, which right. we say water, we're talking about either deionized water or a, a glycol mix. It's you know, all standard cooling materials. And ERS under lots of stress, um, Ferrari had a new battery this weekend, actually thinking about that out loud now, maybe, oh, okay. maybe it's related to that because that needs cooling as well. So this is really just getting a bit more performance out of the car so that they can really increase the duty cycle, push the engine harder without it reaching peak temperatures, which then causes systems to fail and then potentially big unreliability. And then also the last part of the season is a tough one for the engineers too, the engine engineers, well, particularly with Mexico, Malaysia, yeah. Mexico high altitude and so forth. You know, the weather in Malaysia wasn't perhaps quite as we would normally expect it with the rain, but still very high temperatures. It's really important. We're going to Mexico uh, in a few mm. weeks. High altitude really stresses the uh, cooling system. And we've seen this in the past. Mercedes in the past have added radiators about this time of the year just to make sure that they've got absolute yeah. reliability going forwards.